When we first built our circular flow diagram of an economy, we started with a very simple economy in which there were only households and firms. The households bought goods or outputs in the output markets from the firms, and then they sold inputs like labor to the firms in the input markets. So dollars flowed from households through the output markets to the firms, and then back to the households through the input markets, like the labor market. We're now going to zero in on one portion of that circular flow diagram. And in particular, we're going to focus on the role of households in output markets. So when households buy goods in output markets, they're demanding goods, which naturally takes us to the idea of demand curves. So what's a demand curve? A demand curve simply illustrates how the quantity of a good demanded by household changes as the price and only the price changes. So let's start with a simple example. Let's think about your demand for gasoline. We'll draw a graph where we're going to put gallons of gasoline per week on the horizontal axis and the price per gallon on the vertical. So we have quantity on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. And suppose that we observe that currently the price of gasoline is $2 per gallon and at that price you're choosing to buy 10 gallons of gasoline per week. We've just identified one point on your demand curve. At the price of $2 per gallon you're consuming, you're demanding 10 gallons of gasoline per week. Now suppose that the price of gasoline goes up. It goes up from two to four dollars. And suppose that your parents are concerned about the stress that you face from this increase in the price and so they want to give you extra money to make sure that you can do exactly what you've been doing and you don't have to change anything. So since the price went up from two to four and you bought ten gallons of gasoline before, they would have to give you $20 extra for you not to have to change anything that you're doing. So suppose your parents send you $20 per week extra. The question is, are you still going to consume 10 gallons of gasoline per week? Most people would say, probably. But you now know about opportunity costs. When the price of gasoline went up from 2 to $4, the opportunity cost of consuming gasoline has increased. It used to be that every time you consumed a gallon of gasoline, you gave up $2 worth of other consumption. But now, when you consume a gallon of gasoline, you're giving up $4 worth of other consumption. So the opportunity cost of consuming gasoline has gone up. Similarly, the opportunity cost of consuming other goods has gone down relative to gasoline. When you consumed a dollar's worth of other goods before, you gave up one half gallon of gasoline because the price was two dollars per gallon. But now that the price is four dollars per gallon, when you consume one dollar's worth of other consumption, you're giving up only a quarter gallon of gasoline. So the opportunity cost of doing other things relative to gasoline has gone down. Now whenever an opportunity cost goes up, we do less of that. And whenever an opportunity cost of something goes down, we do more of it. That's called a substitution effect. The substitution effect is the change in consumption from a change in opportunity costs.
when opportunity costs go up, we substitute, substitute away from the thing that's become relatively more expensive and towards things that have become relatively cheaper, things whose opportunity cost has fallen. So in this case, when the price of gasoline goes up, the substitution effect says we're going to consume less gasoline. So even though your parents have made it possible for you to not change any of what you're doing, when the price goes up to $4 per gallon, the substitution effect says you're going to consume fewer gallons of gasoline. You're going to end up at some point like this when the price is $4 per gallon. Now, is this a point on your demand curve? Well, let's look back at the definition of a demand curve. A demand curve illustrates how the quantity of a good demanded changes as the price and only the price changes. Well, to get to this point, the price changed, but something else changed too. Your parents sent you $20 a week extra. So this is not a point on your demand curve because there's something else that's changing too that got you to this point. To find the point on your demand curve, we now have to take that $20 away from you. So imagine that you're sitting at this point and now I take the $20 away from you. That's a decrease in your income. It hasn't changed the opportunity cost of anything. Prices haven't changed, so there's no additional substitution effect. Instead, there is what we call an additional income effect. Whenever a price changes, opportunity costs change, and that gives rise to the substitution effect. But in addition, a price increase has made your income worth less. So in effect, your income has fallen. That's the income effect. So when we take that $20 away from you, are you going to consume more or less than you did when you had the $20 at that higher price? Well, it turns out that depends on what kind of good gasoline is. There are two kinds of goods. There are normal goods, and there are what we call inferior goods. Normal goods are goods where if income goes up, it leads to an increase in consumption. And when income goes down, it leads to a decrease in consumption. Inferior goods are goods where if your income goes up, it leads to a decrease in consumption. And if your income goes down, it leads to an increase in consumption. I can think back to the time when I was a graduate student. I wasn't making very much money. And I had to really watch what I was spending my money on. It turns out I ate a lot of pasta pasta is cheap and I didn't eat a lot of steak because steak was expensive. Then when my income went up when I got my first job I could start affording some of the finer things in life so I started buying more steak and when I bought more steak I didn't need to buy as much pasta. So when my income went up my pasta consumption went down. Pasta was an inferior good for me and when my income went up my steak consumption went up so steak was a normal good for me. So where are you going to go from this point when I take the $20 away from you depends on whether gasoline is a normal or an inferior good for you. If it's a normal good, then when your income falls when I take that $20 away from you per week, your consumption of gasoline is going to fall. So you're going to move to the left. And that's a point on your demand curve. That's a point where we've now adjusted your income back to what it used, used to be, so your income hasn't changed from where it was when we started, and only the price has changed. So when we connect these two points, we get an estimate of your demand curve, an estimate of the relationship that illustrates how the quantity of the good, gasoline, changes for you as the price, and only the price changes. If, on the other hand, gasoline is an inferior good for you, then when we start at this point that the substitution effect took you to, and we take income away from you, we take the $20, your consumption of gasoline would increase. 
so you'd move in the other direction, then that would be the new point on your demand curve. And so when we connect that to the original point, we'd get a steeper demand curve. Now, if you go on in economics, in your next economics class, you're going to learn that in principle it's possible for that income effect for inferior goods to be so large that it takes you over in this direction so that the demand curve that emerges is actually upward sloping. But it turns out that in the real world, those cases are exceedingly rare. We hardly ever see behavior like that. So for our purposes, it's good enough to assume that that income effect for inferior goods will never be so big as to cause the demand curve to slope up. We're going to assume that what we call the law of downward sloping demand holds. That demand curves always slope down. They might be shallower if you have a really normal good, or they might be steeper if you have a more inferior good, but they're always going to slope down. In other words, they're always going to tell us that as the price increases, the quantity you demand of a good is going to fall. 